So last but not least, we're going to talk a little bit about how things like our long-lived assets are reported and analyzed. As you can see here, uh, plant assets are shown in the financial statements under property plants and equipment. And intangible assets are shown separately under intangible assets. Intangibles do not usually have the contra asset account like that of plants, property, and equipment of accumulated depreciation. The amortization of these accounts is recorded as a direct decrease or a credit to these asset accounts. Either within the balance sheet or in the notes, there should be disclosure of the balances of the major classes of assets, such as land, buildings and improvements, machinery and equipment, and the accumulated depreciation by major classes or in total. So here we're seeing it as a little bit more detailed. However, what we might see is we might see a uh, representation that says property, plants, and equipment net of 14633 in a single line. And then all this additional information would either be in a separate schedule or uh, written out narratively in the notes to the financial statements. This is similar to what we'd also find with the intangible assets. In addition to the major classes and the accumulated depreciation that is associated with them, the depreciation and amortization methods that are being used should be described and the amount and the expense for those periods disclosed. Now that we can see how it looks on a balance sheet, let's talk about some of the things that analysis can tell us. The presentation of financial information about plant assets enables different decision makers to analyze the company's use of its plant assets. One of those uses or one of those analysis is the return on assets. Return on assets is an overall measure of profitability. This ratio is computed by dividing net income by average assets. You get average assets by taking assets at the beginning of the year, assets at the end of the year, and dividing them by two. The return on assets ratio indicates the amount of net income that is generated by each dollar of assets. The higher the return on assets, the more profitable the company. Marketing ROI as a profit indicator is one of the underlying financial concepts of return on assets. Uh, they will, what they'll do is they will calculate ROI and they'll use it as a marketing initiative for investment houses. Uh, go ahead and press pause if you would like to read the rest of this. And then start up again when we are ready to look at some more of the analysis. Asset turnover is a ratio that indicates how efficiently a company is using its assets to generate sales. So how many dollars of sales are generated by each dollar that is invested in assets? This ratio is computed by dividing net sales by average total assets Remember, average total assets is assets beginning of the period, assets at the end of the period, add those together, and then divide them by two. When comparing two companies in the same industry, the one with the higher asset turnover ratio is operating more efficiently, generating more sales per dollar invested in assets. So looking at this information that's in front of us, Southwest Airlines is more efficient than the industry, and it is more efficient than JetBlue. JetBlue, though, has increased their efficiency between 2013 and 2014. Now, in Chapter 5, we talked about profit margin. The profit margin ratio is calculated by dividing net income by net sales, and it tells us how effective a company is in turning its sales into income that is how much income each dollar of sales provides. The return on assets can be computed from the profit margin and the asset turnover. So if we take profit margin 
multiply by asset turnover, then we will get return on assets. This is where profit margin equals net income divided by net sales. And the asset turnover equals net sales divided by average total assets. And return on assets equals net income divided by average total assets. This relationship has important strategic implications for management. If a company wants to increase its return on assets, it can do it one of two ways. By increasing the margin it generates from each dollar of goods that it sells, or the profit margin, or by increasing the volume of goods it sells, the asset turnover. So by looking here at the return on assets as the result of the profit margin, we can see that JetBlue Airways was more effective at generating sales from its assets. Sorry. Southwest was more effective at generating sales from its assets, while JetBlue was better at driving profit from its sales. You can see that return on assets is not a factor of just one piece or another. It's a factor of both. With most businesses, there's going to be a trade-off between the margin and turnover. If a business has a high margin, turnover will typically be low and vice versa. Let's look at asset turnover for Paramore Company who reported net income of 180,000, net sales of 420,000, and had total assets of 460,000 on January 1st, 2017. In total assets on December 31st of 2017, 540,000. They want us to determine Paramore's asset turnover for 2017. Now remember, that formula is net sales divided by average total assets. So net sales was 420,000. We had total assets on January 1st of 460,000, and then on December 31st of 540,000. We add those together and divide it by two to determine what our average total assets is. And that gives us an asset turnover of 